inflation rate, which has been a source of concern for policymakers, businesses, and consumers alike. According to the NBS reports, Nigeria's inflation rate hits a staggering 33.2% in March 2024, the highest over a decade, raising concerns about economic stability and prospects. While food inflation reached 40.01% year-on-year, core inflation, which excludes the prices of volatile agricultural products and energy rose to 25.9%. On a year-on-year -year basis, what are the uh, underlying factors that need to be addressed uh, with these figures? Let's get talking. And I'm being joined by an investment strategy and portfolio manager with our free investment West Africa, Mr. Temitokwe Omoshui. Good afternoon, Mr. Omoshui. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining the program. Good afternoon, Tony. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, of course, my first question would be 33.2% uh, is what we have for the month of March. Uh, what were you expecting? And uh, what is your reaction to some of the fundamentals surrounding these figures? All right. Thank you very much, Tolu. Um, well, we knew that uh, inflation will continue to hinge higher, around 33%. And... Um, the expectation is that the trend is likely to continue uh, within the next two months before we begin to see some deceleration. In fact, you know, the CBN had thought that um, inflation would peak at 33% in May, but it seems the shock we saw uh, at the FS market has taken a toll on prices. So it seems the peak has jumped ahead of uh, the CBN's view, which means that we may see a higher level of inflation before you know, we begin to turn the call on uh, the very hot um, um, numbers uh, we are currently seeing. Mm. But food, we, we saw a, a reduction, I think, month on month for food. But your gen generally, what is your reaction to food inflation figures in Nigeria at the moment? Well, I, I think it's very disturbing, to say the very least. Um, inflation, food inflation you know, over 40%. And if you look at it effectively, that is if you analyze it on month-to-month -month basis, if you analyze the month-to-month, -month, food inflation is over 50%. And if you go down, drill down to a commodity price watch that is usually released by the, um, by the MBS, um, uh, food inflation is actually over 100%. It's over 100%. As a matter of fact, the top food items that are consumed by Nigerians, according to the MBS, They've gone up by over 100%. So that shows the severe pressure on inflation in Nigeria. Yes, you know, the conversation has shifted to how the current appreciation of the Naira would impact inflation. But last month, um, I, I, we saw about 32% um, increase in the price of before the major appreciation we are seeing, you know, as of today, um, we saw about 32% increase in the price of dollar. So in a way, that may have contributed to inflation number we saw. And the, you know, the, there's always this expectation that is built in Nigeria once FS has started going up and um, uh, you know, uh, prices of uh, uh, commodities will start um, skyrocketing. In addition to that, uh, there has also been a lingering impact of insecurity. One cannot downplay the impact of insecurity on food supply in Nigeria. And sadly, because the point, I, I know you might want to be uh, to, to thinking about how um, the current appreciation of the naira would impact uh, would impact um, food prices, but then uh, we know that in in Nigeria there's this behavior um, around them um, commodity prices. Once prices are high, you are likely going to get uh, get to a point where uh, prices will moderate. We we saw that in 2016 into 2018 when exchanges skyrocketed. You know, but for, since 2016 to date, we have not seen a major decline in inflation to uh, a single digit that we used to see in 2013. So, is a, you know, a, the, the situation is, uh, yes, FS is, is a major contributor, but because of our structural challenges, you know, to look to, um, just about some hours ago, I was talking to someone um, um, in the market, you know, a popular market in Lagos. So this person was telling me about, because I just need to get a sense of what is really happening in the market. So this person was talking to me about how well the prices of some items, about two, have dropped, but most of most other items are still going up in prices, right? And the, the conversation is that, for instance, a bag of rice that used to be that skyrocketed 
you know, uh, to about seven, over 70,000 uh, Naira, right, has dropped to about 65, right? And you and I know that we're coming from less than 40,000 Naira. So that draw may look, yes, applaudable, but we're coming from, we're barely 50,000 before the end of last year. So it, it, prices are usually very sticky in Nigeria. And, and, and the fact is that production, the level of productivity is ridiculously low. For instance, you know, um, um, it's quite clear in Nigeria that we use less than half of arable land in Nigeria. That alone tells you that even if governments increase money, for instance, if um, there's increase in wages and all of that, the problem is still lack of productivity. So if you have more money today, you are likely going to just put pressure on prices. That's why some economists will always say that, okay, um, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. To a large extent, yes, I know that some might want to ask me that, am I saying that you have a lot of money? No, you have a lot of money, more than what is produced locally. And in addition to that, I also spoke to, yesterday, I spoke to a, a consultant in the agricultural sector in Nigeria. This person was telling me that, is, uh, that it takes a lot of courage for aggregators that, that are intermediating, that used to intermediate between manufacturers and farmers. It takes a lot of courage for them to even go to the farm right now because of high level of insecurity. And the farmers, right, that are even on, on, that are, that are Currently, uh, currently cultivating, you know, they have to pay a lot of uh, backs to all the, you know, all sort of people, you know, that are threat to their lives. So you have to be very, you know, very determined right now for you to be able to go to farm. And uh, I think one other point that uh, the consultant uh, mentioned to me is that uh, manufacturers are even paid for products that have not been harvested. You know that what that means? It means that the level of productivity in Nigeria is ridiculously low. Now, if we don't address insecurity, we are going nowhere. And for every country in the world, right, for every country in the world that seems very stable, from the US, UK, and among other advanced economies and strong emerging markets, we prioritize two things to ensure that they are secured, food and energy security. Food and energy security. You know, you'll be surprised that a country like Ukraine, that is war ravaged, inflation is not even up to five percent. To look, inflation is not up to five percent in Ukraine. Nigeria is not in war. Russia, that that got all the sanctions that you can ever think of. We don't even have one percent of that sanction. Russia's inflation right now is not up to ten percent. And let's even talk about the most recent war, Israel. That investors should have um, exited those countries, right? Israel's inflation, right, is not even up to, you know, 5%. So I think it's high time we began to look at approaches to address this problem because inflation, I can tell you, inflation is killing people in Nigeria more than war because if you are not able to afford the right medicine for someone that, that has terminal disease, if you are not able to, uh, you know, afford good food, if you are not able to afford transport, if you are not able to afford housing, it's not just going to impact Nigerians, you know, of today, it's also going to impact the future of Nigerians because if you don't eat quality food, if you don't have good nutrition, brain capacity, I suspect that it, it will be impacted because in Nigeria has the second largest stunted children in the world, like globally, and this record was as of 2020. To lose. So just imagine, imagine the level of inflation we've seen between 2020 to date. The rep, the, this number would have increased substantially, and it was even uh, reported by UNICEF that 32% of children under five in Nigeria, you know, is, is experiencing high level of malnutrition. So it is, in fact, there has to be a state of emergency on food and energy security in Nigeria. And it's not just by mouth. We have to act decisively, not just for the now, for the future of our country, because it is very, very important for the security of Nigeria, not just about the weapon or defense, food security should be on the front burner. Hmm. Despite interventions of the Central Bank of Nigeria, many still say that inflation still continues to go high. NPR at the moment is 24.75%. But clearly, inflation continues to go higher. Now, two in one question. What does this mean? Again, I want your views with regards to what 24.75% means for the real sector, for the business people. And on the other side, why inflation has refused to even come down despite that development. 
All right, so, Tulu, thank you very much for that um, interesting question. You know, for every economy policy, we have two, two broad areas, fiscal and monetary policy. And in economy policy, there's what we call the decision lag, the impact lag, right? Decision lag is when you make, is it a period you make that decision because of an economic event. And the impact lag is the period between when you make the decision and when the impact will be felt on the economy. We know in economies that for every monetary policy, monetary policy is able to make decisions faster, but the impact is not as important. In fact, it's not as fast as fiscal policy. However, we understand that in fiscal policy, when you make decisions, it usually takes a while to make very cogent decisions because it has to go through you know, the legislative arm and all of that. But it has a major impact on the, on the economy. As a matter of fact, I believe that um, uh, monetary policy is just CPR. That is, you know, uh, 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 the kind of uh, process, or let me call it first aid, the kind of process just to ensure that something, uh, something is relatively stable within, the, within a short period of time. However, to achieve a price stability on a sustainable term, there's nothing much a monetary policy authority can do beyond tweaking all of those variables, interest rates, money supply, and all that. And to look today, you know, when we talk about the FS condition and what the CBN is looking at, the CBN is looking at how to use interest rate movement to affect FS rate. Yes, that is very critical to an economy stability. But when you disaggregate Nigeria's consumption pattern, as reported by MBS in 2019, right, the topmost of the, of, we spend about 56% on food, right? The top most on the list is yam. Do we import yam? No. So which means that some of the policies of interest rates, exchange rate and all that will not really affect that area. So the question is what is happening to uh, uh, middle bed or where we are getting yam in Nigeria? The second one has to do with rice, vegetable, and among others. You know that, yes, some of these things are imported, right? But there's a point where the, the policy of the CBN will not affect Food supply, especially uh, food supply, so food that are not important. So, interest as a matter of fact, we are, it, it's even possible for higher inflation when interest rate is too high to have a negative impact on inflation. So, I, I believe that at every point in time, the CBN has to um, continue to monitor the optimal point because if interest rate is high, you already know that commercial papers and all sort of you know insurances or a medium of, uh, of funding by private sector will be negatively affected because they have to raise money at a very high rate in economies we call that clouding out effect of, 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 of the private sector. And if that happens, if um, companies begin to grapple with high interest expense or high cost of fund, you know, it will affect their profitability and ultimately they will want to tweak other variable. And what comes to mind is labor, which means that they want to consider on um, um, the, the, the job market. They want to cut on their overhead. So it is very, for the, uh, in fact, I'll say that the, the job is 20%, 20% monetary policy, 80% fiscal policy authority. Otherwise, there is no, it gets to a point where you, once you increase interest rates, right, at a certain point, it can become inimical to the economy. As even um, exchange rate um, uh, appreciation, there's a limit to the level of appreciation you can have in an economy because for every monetary policy, there are unintended consequences. You cannot, you know, that's why an economy of, uh, cannot be too hot or too cold. Uh, price appreciation of the currency cannot even be too much as well. So I think that the onus lies on, on the fiscal authority to take decisive measure to support the monetary policy authority because even if we put push rates higher to 30%, at the end of the day, we are likely going to create a lot of problems, even for the financial sector, and that will have a ripple effect on the overall economy. Hmm. Finally, food and energy security you mentioned, very important things, but at the moment, Electricity tariff in Nigeria for Band A consumers is over 300%. That's the increase we've seen. Uh, when you talk about energy and food security, can we wrap up on that note? Highlight what you think government can do to make this happen. All right. All right. So for food and energy security, when you talk about security of food, we, we, we are looking at accessibility, affordability, right? Those two parameters are extremely important. 
food must be affordable and everyone in the country must have access to it you know it's more it's most it, they must have access to it at every point in time if you need food right now you must have it so we we don't have to begin to talk about malnutrition anymore in addition to that you must have access to it in the right quantity so for energy i'll say you need the right voltage to be efficient so in why this is important because nigeria productivity is not as efficient if there was enough um, um, energy supply in terms of electricity and all of that right then everybody will become more productive you see someone that is able to do a lot more work online you do um, you can get a lot of freelance across the country in fact your costs and you know you become more efficient you'll be able to plan your life you know, a lot of people think about electricity supply in nigeria and that in a way is affecting productivity so it is actually very important it's very very critical for government to begin to look at how this is addressed and i think that the, the the policy strategy has to be carefully divided into three parts you have to look at the short term medium term and lo long term for short term policy approach we, it, it does not matter how 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 uh, hard the decision it could even be for nigeria to import food to look it because for every policy is a, is a means to an end, and most times, the end justifies the means. Because if you are making a policy and people are not seeing the impact, they will complain. So it is very important that we look at the short-term approach. It could also be subsidy, food subsidy, where we have food banks. It is it, there's no nation in the world that there's no a bit of subsidy. I think the problem about subsidy in Nigeria is the high level of corruption. In fact, in the UK, there's subsidy on energy, although they allow a bit of market reflective rate. But the government ensures that there's a cap because, um, um, you know, uh, when something is very important like uh, energy, electricity, and when it's uh, those kind of utility, government tries to ensure that the welfare of the people, you know, is not severely or negatively impacted. So I think that we have to, we need food bank in Nigeria. It is super important, and we need more public markets that people will be encouraged to go to the food market. And we give a medium for state government, local government to regulate. Rises, they'll be able to regulate. Prices. In fact, it's going to be a win win. There'll be times where the state governors or local go, uh, government would not would, would give waivers to sellers in those markets. And in the medium term and long term, we have to monitor. We have so many policies and programs in Nigeria for agricultural sector. We have to monitor it and um, implementation. Implementation and monitoring of this program is very, very poor. You know, we have to begin to look at that. We've, we've talked about a lot of intervention from the CBN in agriculture, from fertilizer, you know, um, um, financing and all of that. We need to begin to look at, we need to look at, begin to look at how everything is implemented to the later. Like, we have to see the numbers. In fact, if possible, government will create, you know, would, would, would prioritize, in fact, the, maybe the military should be reporting to the government, to the president directly, because without food, right? In fact, there's this saying that a, a, a hungry man is an angry man. You cannot be productive. You cannot be productive. And I think on a long-term basis, we have to fight security as if Nigeria is fighting Boko Haram and other insurgencies. Inflation must be fought. Insecurity, right, must be fought headlong because its impact on uh, on food uh, uh, security is grievous. So it, we have to look at it. So beyond just security of life and property, we know that insecurity is impacting inflation. So that must be decisively addressed because, you know, for short-term approach that I mentioned, it is not sustainable to import. It is not sustainable to keep giving subsidy. It is not sustainable to keep giving waivers. But because you already have medium and long-term strategy, as you are exhausting some of those strategies, your medium to long-term approach will begin to yield fruit and it will push the effect. Because at some point, you know, the current um, uh, 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 positive news that we are getting on FS, right, if we don't produce, if we don't export, fundamental will always catch up with every macro indicator, irrespective of what is driving it now. The fundamental driver of pricing is demand and supply. If you want price of food to remain is significantly low for a very long time. A lot of countries, in fact, in the US, UK, you see negative inflation, deflation on food, deflation, that is, price are going down, not just deceleration, they are going down. If you want to see that, you have to increase supply. So every policy to increase supply is what should be at the forefront at this moment. Brilliant, as usual, investment strategy and portfolio manager with Afri Invest West Africa, Mr. Tibi Tokwe, Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.
Thank you. Interesting conversation as usual with Mr. Omoshui. But let's go to 